The Valley of the Boyne River in Ireland is the site of many ancient monuments such as Newgrange, Nowth, and Douth. This video will focus on a particular stone at Nowth. Nowth overlooks the Boyne River and consists of a large central mound surrounded by smaller mounds. Large decorated curbstones outline the perimeter of the large mound. Curbstone 15, or K15, is the main subject of this video and is located on the eastern side of the mound. Unless photographed under ideal lighting conditions, the markings can be very faint. This 3D scan from the Discovery Program will help show what marks exist. This stone is well known for this fan-shaped pattern, which some have proposed as a sundial of sorts, but I don't think this is the case for various reasons connected to how sundials work and how shadows would be cast. I do think the general layout of the motif might have been inspired by the patterns created by shadow sticks. In this video, there isn't time to address this idea further, but it may be the subject of a future video. The possible interpretations of the markings on K15 that will be discussed in this video, based on current and past analysis, are only conjecture, and it would be difficult to ever know for certain to what extent they are correct, if at all. But the various ideas can be analyzed for how well they fit with what we do know, and can be weighed against any future data that might corroborate or contradict them. There are 18 full rays of the fan-like image with partial markings on either side. This could indicate a number between 18 and 19 with possible lunar connections, but that will be kept for another discussion. Along the edge of the rays, there are rough rectangular markings with smaller markings flanking them. Similar small markings are inserted between some of the designs, one oriented the same way and two perpendicular to the others. The lower left area is quite damaged, making it hard to see how the pattern continues, but it seems likely that there were 16 main marks, and perhaps the flanking mark pattern continues as well. If the days in a year are divided and subdivided, 16 parts can be obtained, and Alexander Tom found some evidence for these divisions based on a statistical distribution of site orientations in Britain. These 16 intervals would be about 23 days each, but some would need to have 22 days so as not to exceed the 365 or 366 days in a year. Tom's proposed intervals match well with how the days would actually need to be distributed in the past when the time from one solstice to the next was uneven because of the orientation of the Earth's axis in relation to the nearer and faster part of its orbit. This produces mostly 23-day intervals, with some of 22 days, and one of 24 days, with the larger and smaller intervals being positioned in the longer and shorter portions of the year. I did an analysis of multiple years from various time periods spanning the Neolithic and Bronze Age to see what combinations of 23 and 22-day intervals, and sometimes 24 and more rarely 21-day intervals, produced the best match for pairs of declination values in the longer and shorter parts of the year. Tom's investigation had no connection to Curbstone 15, but N. L. Thomas suggested a link to the 16 interval calendar in his analysis of the stone. He made inferences for all the images on the stone, and some of his ideas may have been on the right track, but we will focus on the 16 symbols here, specifically his attempt to connect the markings to the number of days in each interval, since they can't all have an even number. Taking the larger rectangles to represent a minimum of 21 days, he used the other marks as additional days to total up to 365. He must not have had a very good image to work from, because he is missing some very clear marks while including some of the in-between marks in his count for a few intervals of 24 days, which in turn requires more 22-day intervals. Some 22-day intervals are of course necessary, but this interpretation requires too many and does not seem accurate to the markings.
Ewan Mackay did his own analysis of the proposed 16-month calendar markings of K-15 and wrote an excellent paper about it, which is linked in the video description. He was working from some excellent photos, and his drawing is much more accurate, but it seems a 3D scan of the stone was not yet available. Like Thomas, he counts the larger rectangles as 21-day symbols and the smaller markings as the additional days, but states his decision to ignore the in-between marks. This leaves most intervals at 23 days each, with a 22 and a 21 day interval being extrapolated in the damaged area to add up to 365. He decided the stone matched most closely with Alexander Tom's intervals by taking the top right area as the spring equinox and working downward so that the smaller intervals would be in the shorter part of the year when the Earth is orbiting slightly faster. I would like to note that taking the summer as the top right and working counterclockwise up to it also keeps the shorter intervals in the right place, and either direction using Mackay's or Tom's slightly different intervals worked well in my comparison with actual declination data with just one day of offset from the solstices, which is well within acceptable parameters. I wanted to try my own interpretation that would include the in-between marks if possible. They seem quite prominent and planned with plenty of space to accommodate them. As I looked at the spaces between the rectangles, I wondered where the solstices and other days marking the intervals would fall as conceptualized by the people using this system. Would they be at the beginnings of the intervals, or at the ends? In other words, would they think of the solstice as falling on the 23rd day of a certain interval, or the first day starting a new interval. Our modern concepts of counting and measurement are very formalized, but ancient conventions might not be intuitive to us. If the spaces between the markings are taken as the special days, standing outside the interval counts, with the large spiral at the top right marking the starting point in the space before the count starts, then the rectangle marks could represent 20 days with two additional days attached to all of them for 16 perfectly even intervals of 22 days each. If all 16 in-between days were counted, the total would be 368, which is exactly three days more than is needed in most years, and two more than what is needed in a leap year to keep the calendar from drifting. I suggest that the markings inserted between the rectangles represent not additional extra days, but skipped days especially the two that are perpendicular to the others, as days that are skipped every year. The marking that is oriented the same as the others would be the leap day that is usually skipped but sometimes counted. This would happen around every four years, likely when a solar marker was reached late enough to be noticed as a whole day off. Interestingly, the leap day corresponds closely to what we think of as the equinox position if the summer solstice is taken as the starting point at the top right, working downwards. That is exactly the best time of year to mark a discrepancy of the sun's position on the horizon. The other two skip marks are exactly where they would least be missed at the 16th divisions and not at either solstice or the cross quarter days that divide the year into eighths. They are also the 16ths after the more important divisions, which makes sense as the 16ths before would be more useful to prepare for those days. This interpretation also fits well with calculated declination data, with the shorter part of the year that includes the skipped days falling in the part of the calendar where it should. As with the intervals from Tom and Mackay, the declination values at each interval fall within one degree of the other interval when the sun passes back through, in this case with a two-day solstice offset, which would not make it a noticeable difference in sun position at this latitude or likely be detectable with the methods used to determine solstices. Having the rectangles equal 20 days each is also a very natural number to represent and has been used by many cultures in what often develops into a base 20 or vigesimal system, likely originating from the number of fingers and toes on each hand and foot. Of course, the stone itself wasn't likely used as a functioning calendar, but more a way to record it, like a mnemonic device to get all the information symbolically into one place. It reminds me of the rhyme, 
30 days has September, April, June, and November. In this case, it would go 16 periods of 22 days each, with a special extra day between them, except the one after summer solstice and the one after fall equinox, while the fall equinox itself only gets an extra day if the sun hasn't passed a marker at the expected time. Not quite as catchy. A practical calendar meant for everyday use would be more likely to have been something carved out of wood with some of these designs and perhaps holes to hold a marker. Alternatively, something as simple as tally sticks could be used to mark the 22 days of each interval while the special days in between, to be either counted or skipped, could easily be memorized. Surely there would have been different celebrations or rituals on these days, especially at the solstices as well as the midpoints, corresponding closely to equinoxes, including the important event to keep the calendar synchronized. Further divisions every eighth of a year would be of note as well, while the final divisions into sixteen parts, two of which were not to have a day of their own, were possibly less emphasized. It seems likely these markings have some connection to a sixteen-part division of the year, regardless of which specific interpretation is used. If any of these inferences are on the right track, it is likely that remaining symbols on the stone have other astronomical or calendrical meanings, and there are other stones with similar motifs. These other markings on curbstone 15 at Nowth, and comparisons with other stones in Ireland, will be discussed in a later video. Thank you for watching, and please help support the Archaeoastronomy database.